see just how far we've come. Oh, it's jumping ahead like crazy. So back in February 2008, AMD decided to finally release documentation for the graphics card. Uh, and also some code. So I had a look at the code, had a look at the docs and thought, hmm, I might be able to do that. And decided to give it a shot. Fast forward, August 2008, I wrote a test. Well, I finished the test program and managed to get a radio X 1300 to open the display and display something. From there, I asked Hyperion for access to the developer docs to write an actual driver. The, the first minimal driver came in October of 2008. Uh, and by minimal driver, I mean just the frame buffer, no acceleration, not even the mouse point was accelerating at this point. But either way, it was good to get a picture. Moving on, in May 2009, I started getting the hardware acceleration in. So that basically meant it was kind of usual. By September 2009, I had it. Uh, reading the DDC information, or reading the EDID information from the monitor, so that the computer knew what screen modes the monitor supports. Fast forwarding a bit, by December I had the compositing, so basically all the acceleration features are in there at this point. And jumping forward a bit, in between I moved back to New Zealand from Canada, so that delayed me a little bit. Yes, <laughs> my, my machine was shipped from Canada, from Toronto, so they still got it. About a year? Uh, no, it took a few months at least though. Yeah. <laughs> like, anyway, by April 2011, I moved on to the Raven XD 2004 series. So I got, basically got that one up and running as well, there were a few bits missing. But in between, in June 2011, I released my 2D benchmark and talk graphics based 2D. The main reason for that was I kind of wanted to get some data on how this graphics drive is doing and are there any bottlenecks that I need to clear up. And added to that, it's kind of useful to, to be able to compare the different graphics cards and see relative to each other how well they do. Moving on, back in, then, moving on to October 2011. Um, I had the render manager working in the background, and that was to give 3D drivers shared access to the GPU. It bypassed the Custom 96 completely, uh, because that was kind of a bottleneck problem in the back. Then in February 2012, Aeon stepped in to, to fund it. Basically, well, at this stage, it was clear I needed to work, this was not going to be a spare time project. There's no way that I could get this driver and, and maintain it while AMD keeps on cranking out new cars um, as a spare time project. So it was either someone funds it or it was like a crash. So they stepped in and helped out and things started moving faster. At the same time, February 2000, well, was it the same time? Yes, the same month. I released a composite 3D demo, so that the 3D animated one was just to show off what you could do with without 3D drivers of the 2D compositing. And Daniel, Sherry Darling, took that to the next level in Wings Battlefield, which was pretty cool. Uh, jumps again. In June, see this is what I mean with the graphics cards being released every year. The 5,000, 6,000 series came out in 2012. Well, I got them working in 2012. I don't know when they were actually released, but the 5,000 series came first. Um, and then by April 2014, we were finally at version 1.0. So that's, yes, six years after we started, I guess. 2014 was the year when we introduced composite video. People wanted overlay, because it gives faster video playback. Uh, the overlay units don't actually exist anymore, but everybody else was using textured video, so I suggested, how about we build the um, well, put the YUV to RGB conversion into the compositing feature. Uh, it's way more flexible than overlay and it worked pretty well. So that came in October 2018, which allowed us to play some full HD videos, depending on the project. Some full HD videos can be played back 
Like this one here, the, the big bus guy, the one I had, was about 50% CPU usage, so you can play it back at full speed. In 2015, finally got 3D working um, for the old 3D system, so it was limited, but it was great to have it there. And this is when things, for me, start getting really interesting. So in March 2016, the uh, minimum viable version of Warp TV Nova was released. So it's a modern database graphics system, which means that developers can write software that's run on the graphics card instead of the CPU, and do all sorts of fancy effects with it. Um, we got OpenGL by uh, OpenGL ES2, which is uh, Daniel did that wrapper. Uh, that was my suggestion. I said, look, full OpenGL is going to be too much work. OpenGL ES ditches the old legacy stuff, makes everything a lot easier, and we can add full desktop OpenGL later by Regal, or GL 4 es which I didn't know existed at that time. Jumping forward a year, so last year, October 2017, we had a greatly improved version of Warp 3D Nova, lots of different features, new features, the render to texture, the bitmap is texture, you can see here, the, the screen being wrapped onto a cube, which other people thought looked a lot cooler than I realized. I just implemented it as a, as a quick test. And then people said, actually, that's pretty cool, which is true. Um, I can't remember when they, they, they were working, I don't think they were actually working on Spencer. I don't think it was released at this point, but they definitely had it working using advanced effects that you can only do with modern shader as 3D. So what's happened since then? This is the last year, basically the last year of my graphics graph development. So first you've got the V3, uh, the Rick NXT driver, which unlocks all the video RAM. Previously we were limited to the 256 megs that the CPU can see. Now the 3D drivers can use all of it. Then there's the Radium X driver, RX driver, sorry. Um, that's because once again the Southern Islands cars are getting older and they're getting harder to find the shops, so we wanted some to support newer cars. So this supports Polaris. It is completely feature equivalent to the Radium XD, so everything you can do, with the exception of the old Walk 3D driver, uh, Walk 3D Nova, all the 2D stuff, it, it all works. And as an added bonus, dynamic car management is in there, so if, if the graphics pad has nothing to do, it'll drop the pots and voltages automatically. Um, I actually, I didn't expect that we had that this soon, but what AMD did is they set it up so that you need to use the dynamic car management unit to upload the microcode to use the GPU. So it was kind of like, I had to implement at least a minimal part of the car management stuff. So we decided to do the whole thing that's in there. I hope people find it useful. Uh, well, it should be useful. It uh, makes your PC run a little cooler. Uh, for Walk 3D Nova, obviously Polaris support was added. There's no way we're releasing that without having the full 3D support as well. There's a host of bug features and new features. A lot of them were driven by GL4 years. Uh, Kazwani helped us catch a lot of things, fix a lot of things. We added a few things that make me needed. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing that coming because it does make porting uh, OpenGL software from other platforms a lot easier. And there are hundreds of new automated tests supporting all these bug fixes and features. So if there's anybody interested in writing a Warp 3D Nova driver for other hardware, um, I can tell you those tests come in very, very handy. Uh, it gave me a lot of confidence when I was working on the Polaris support. Um, basically, once I had all the tests running, I could start up Spencer, and it just worked. Which is pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Uh, none of this, you know, worrying, oh, will this game crash or will that game crash? It just worked. <coughs> Future work. So, kind of unfinished business and things that are still on the to do list. Uh, I, you know, I can't tell you which order these would be done in. The big one, I think, is video, hardware video decoding. That would be nice to be able to do HD and even ultra high def uh, videos with the CPU at a much lower rate and having it all playing smoothly. There are performance improvements still to come. There's the, the GART or IOMU, that means that the graphics card can read slurp data directly from main memory. 
they all speed everything up. Uh, tiled bitmaps is a way to improve the case, case usage uh, on the GPU. That will provide more speed up when we finally get to that point. That's probably further off to the future, actually. Um, there, you know, there are miscellaneous shader improvements and human structures that could be implemented into that. And at some point, we will move to add more of the ESG level features, like the ESG level features. We're looking further and further into the future of the stage. Final project I'd like to talk to you about is the one that I showed here last year, which is my idea to basically make a, a, a laptop uh, Amiga around the Tango board. Because the Tango is a mini IT board, it's small enough that you can make a fat laptop. I had it running uh, in pieces <laughs> last year. I was really hoping that I would have it completely finished this year, but there have been more difficulties than, well, a lot more difficulties than anticipated. So I have gone up as far as I, well, I've got a lot more design work, but I have got me a, a physical prototype of the LCD uh, screen to deliver for that top. It's right here. Um, I'm running the presentation on it right now, so you can come up with it later. If you've got any suggestions on where I can get materials or different ways of constructing uh, techniques, I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, I still would like to tweak this design a little bit, make it a little bit thinner, lighter, fix a few minor issues. And then it really is designing a, the mounting frame for the electronics, the, the motherboard, the batteries, the UPS. Yeah. Uh, design the, the outer shell. And from there I'll be looking at how to get it made for other people. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you have done so already, you can sign up for the mailing list to keep, it, keep an eye on the project. It will also be useful for me to kind of know how many people are interested. So if you are interested, just sign up for it. And that's basically been my last year. So if you've got questions, suggestions, feel free to ask them. Yeah? yeah? I'm kind of curious, how, architecturally, how are you planning on implementing video decoding on the GPU in our current graphics library? Okay, architecturally, I'm not completely sure. So the, the way it works is there is a separate video decoding unit, which has its own ring buffer that you use to pass data or pass commands to. Um, there's usually a video decoding library on top of that, and then the uh, you know video player, M player, emotion, whatever sits on top of that. Uh, I think it makes sense to take one of the APIs used on another platform, like Linux, and adapt that to the Amiga. But I haven't looked into that in enough detail yet to be able to tell you exactly how we do that. But probably, probably in that kind of line. So there's some, it's something that needs to be done in the base 2D driver, then there's a, a video decoding library, and then the video player. Anything else? So, can you talk about the classic Warp 3D simulations, the uh, Radeon RX? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, you're asking about the... Radeon RX was classic Warp 3D. Classic Warp 3D. Um, I don't think we have any plans to do that at this stage. Um, Daniel's working on a mini GL reloader, which will... It's like mini GL using Warp 3D now. So once he's got that, then anything that has a Warp 3D Nova file will automatically work. But many GL will automatically work Warp 3D Nova. So then, as new hardware comes out, we can implement the driver of Warp 3D Nova and get the uh, legacy 3D as well. The Warp 3D will then work. So Warp 3D is potentially, it's, it's deprecated already. Um, so the old software. Yeah. So the old software will, well, the old mini GL software will run. And I know the Warp 3D uh, author has been working on using Warp 3D Nova as a back end for Warp 3D, which is a, like a Warp 3D replacement. So I think there are channels forward without me having to write a Warp 3D, classic Warp 3D driver for all our customers. Can we talk about definitely, what is it, RZ, right? That one? You're talking about the software layer. WAPP, yeah, WAPP, we need that from the yeah. Do you want to just talk about that briefly for those who haven't heard of it? 
So one WAZP3D is it started out as a software implementation of 3D. Um, it doesn't have a composite back, uh, back end, which is limited to support. He started adding what 3D Nova as well, and I believe it was on, maybe on the AMOS, it has a, a hardware accelerator back end as well. I can't remember if you can see exactly what it's called. That's a Gallium. Ah, Gallium back end, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of started from pure, pure software implementation to kind of a replacement for a platform that don't have for 3D uh, at the same So yeah, it looks like once he's got the machine you know, working properly, then we have all, all 3D software will be supported on Solaris as well. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Uh, since at some point some of us may have made a new video card, 550, 560, 575, 80, RX series. Any of those that you kind of recommend over any of the other ones? Price and what it's really going to get us in the end? So, with what Polaris card would I recommend? Yeah. I haven't tested enough of them myself to be able to recommend. I, it, again, it depends on what you plan on doing with it. I have an RX 550 itself. I find that good enough for what I need to go for. I know that the more expensive, the, the higher in the card you have, the faster it works. And with Spencer, you can see it in the, the frame rate. So you can see if you've got a higher end graphics card, that you're getting a better frame rate than with the lower end ones. Um, at this stage, we don't have too many games that will need the extra. I expect that'll come. That'll probably come again in a day. Uh, so yes, it's a bit hard to give any recommendations, but it will take a while to let other people test it. That's so 550 for sure is... 550 for sure. Well, people test the 560 and 580, but in terms of is how much better is the 580 or the 550 or what's best for what you want to use it for, it's too hard to say that. Yeah. So I, mean, like, I advise, any, if anybody's only using their computer for email or web browsing, then Buy the cheapest card you can get. If you're into gaming, then you probably want to think of it higher in, or maybe go for the range. So you're asking about multi-monitor support? Multi-monitor support. Basically our graphics API doesn't support that at this stage. Um, the graphics library needs a, a big update to support it. I think it could be added. Um, but at this stage, something like, I think if I asked people, took it to the quick survey, asked people, what would you rather have? Video encoding or multi-monitor? There's no contest, right? No. <laughs> no, you want the video. Show of hands. What about show of hands? What are the options? DVD player. Multi monitor. Multi monitor. Oh, yeah, oh you're a developer. You, you want. Give me more screens, please. Give me more screens. Give me more screens. Give me more screens. Yeah, exactly. Okay, give me a show of hands here. Give me a show of hands here. Who would prefer video decoding first? Which one? Decoding? Video decoding. So being able to play high def video, or even ultra high def video, yeah. And who would prefer multi monitor? Yeah, yeah. See, basically the, the developers, the developers, they're, they're, uh, no, no. It's it's the people who have PCs that don't need decoding want multi monitor. It's right. the people who want Amiga only that want the video decoding. People who use Amigas want video decoding. People yeah, only yeah, yeah. Want them to use them. Why multi monitor? Yeah, yeah, I figured that would be okay. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's something we can look at in the future. Um, I have got a few ideas for how we could uh, fit it into the system without rewriting the graphics library completely. Uh, but I need somebody else's co cooperation to get this one done. Yeah, because the idea of a graphics card having more than one monitor needs to be added to the, gra to the graphics card library. You can't just have multiple graphics cards on the 
Well, the next a cheapskate way, way, a cheapskate way of going over would be to practice on your every day, but then you end up with half the memory is for fake card zero and half the memory is for fake card one, and then you start running out of memory and start copying stuff back and forth unnecessarily. Uh, so it's, it's always it's going to be messy if you, if you do that. Anything else? For those of you who have not yet picked up your banquet tickets, 16 of you need to go pick them up. So please do, you can't get in without it. Uh, and uh, the, the banquet will start tonight at 6 30. Uh, so our show hall will close at 5 o'clock in preparation for resetting the, the entire set of the show hall and uh, then having the caterers come in and set up. So uh, that's sort of the thumbnail sketch of that part of the day. What's our, who's our next event? We're done for the day. Time for the day with the Yes, buy, go buy stuff. Uh, it's, it's, time, it's time to take down your wallets. I know many of you already have, and we really appreciate it, and our vendors certainly do. Uh, so we will, uh, our next event then will be closing the show hall at 5 o'clock.